What's going on, my kids? It's your favorite retail fox foxy. Come back at you with a brand new episode of Theo Town Dragon League. And in today's brand new episode, we're going to be building the um, first industries. But first of all, we're going to be taking out this good old fashioned pride park out here, too. I told you the um, park we built in the previous episode was only going to be a placeholder. And obviously, it does take quite a lot actually to make something like this. I'm actually pretty impressed with the way it turned out, but yeah, it's definitely looking pretty good right now. Of course, we got the little love fountains, pan pride flag to say we love all around here, and of course, you know, creator of the city is also a pan femboy as well, too. You know, you get the idea. But anyways, right now, we're currently working on some of the brick roads that are surrounding it, and we're also going to be getting, as I said, some of the first industries started. Downtown pretty much rounds out its way to completion, like right here. But anyways, right now, everything is looking pretty nicely over here. Got a few other things going on right now. We got the, um, Avenue and everything like that, and of course, you know, I'm going to be going very heavy on the decorations. As a matter of fact, I think in the previous episode, I forgot a few spots of decoration. That's actually not very good, but you can tell I was working on a very different, much less structure plan. This is definitely kind of a change over here that has definitely proven to be so far a lot more of a change for the better. Of course, you know, YouTube's algorithm, like, you know, is completely still mad at me for the changes that I made because I actually had to um, shut down for a day in order to properly implement these changes. But at this point, I think I, especially with the Postal 2 stream being monetized, I think I firmly told that Crypto Bro, and I don't know how the hell this happened, but I think I firmly told that Crypto Bro in the CEO's office where he can shove his, where he can shove, like, you know, those shadow policies that everybody keeps talking about here. So we're just going to do our best to ignore it. At some point, you know, tough times got to end. So tough times got to end. It always comes in waves. You know, you know the old sayings and how they go. But anyways, right now, we're currently grounding out the downtown area with some of the, um, Residential. I think that was actually the last residential building that I actually put in terms of skyscrapers. I think everything else beyond this point in downtown is actually city service based. Like you can see that I put down a police station. I think that was an FBI headquarters out here too. So yeah, we got a pretty good police force in the city. Things should be relatively safe in the downtown. It definitely should not be devolving into whatever is going on in Chicago right now. Although a lot of people will definitely tell you exactly why that happened out here and. You know what? I gotta side with the red on that one. That actually was a pretty dumb idea right there. I'm not gonna go too deep in the detail on this one out here, but yeah, it was a dumb idea. It was a dumb thing that the mayor at the time did. I'm pretty sure she was voted out for precisely this. And I have no intentions of letting that happen in Dragon Lake, or really anything I build for that matter. I'm, I'm way too proud of these creations. They look really nice, and I don't want them to become cesspools out here. I don't want them to become like O-Block or something like that. God, I am roasting Chicago a lot, and that is a city that... Oddly enough, I usually give a lot of my utmost praise to, come to think of it, especially with the rail systems and everything like that. It's actually relatively well urbanized, and a lot of major cities here in the U.S. are actually starting to turn in that direction. But of course, you're still going to have groups of people that are going to fight tooth and nail against it because they're in, they're trembling in fear over their property values or something like that. Listen, this had to happen at some point, okay? This had to happen. It's become completely unsustainable, but anyways, I'm kind of like stowing away from the point out here, too. You can see me adding on a few more, um residential i'm actually adding in a lot more apartments again we're going to be doing a lot of density increases out here in downtown and even some of the suburbs are going to be very dense as well too another thing i do want to point out too is we're kind of forced to build higher density because we don't really have a whole lot of land to work with i'm actually trying to edit as little of the ocean as possible so i'm actually trying to minimize the amount of land reclamation that i'm doing at the moment and that's because I felt like it'd be really interesting to put a large city on, like, this really thin, like, stretch of land out here. I thought that would actually be a pretty cool idea, you know? There are actually all- there are already real city building projects that have been done like that, both IRL, but the one that I'm thinking of right now is Verville by City Skylines World. I'm telling you right now, so little of that map is actually- like, it looks like so little of that map is actually buildable. But the thing about Verville is that it, because so little of the map is buildable, everything is kind of like a lot more densely packed into like this tight little area out here where everybody calls home. And I kind of like that idea out here. So you, you may see me use this a lot more. Another example of a project on this channel that uses this type of thinking is Protogen Island. Although Protogen Island is supposed to be in Hawaii, the island's already fairly small anyway. So, very similar dilemma right here to what I'm working with. And on top of that, too, if you're forced to increase the density like this, it kind of challenges the brain, you know? I'm pretty happy with that. You can actually see, I think, like a large lake. We're actually getting really close to the other side of the um, map out here, too. Like, this is a very thin stretch of land, and we are actually at the area where Dragon Lake actually inhabits, or at least, like, the majority of it. 
The actual region itself, by the way, is called Katogax Coast out here. It's actually a nod to the person who actually got me into this game in the first place, or should I say the Katogax, the hybrid, who got me into this game in the first place. But anyways, right now, we're pretty much done with the downtown. You can see me adding a few mass transit options out here. There is going to be a highway running through as well, but it's probably going to be way past the industrial district that I'm currently working on. And, of course, industrial district, you got to have railroad, or not railroads. Um, Well, you got to have railroads in an industrial district, especially because, you know, sometimes it might just be easier to um, at least do part of the cargo shipment by rail, especially if you're transporting something like coal or something like that. But um, there's also, like, the... um trying to think of the other stuff the industrial district has to have but i actually forgot what i was going to say and that's an oopsie on my front if i've ever seen one that's a big mistake out here sorry about that i didn't mean to forget what i was going to say but anyways we're currently adding in some commercial as well some good old-fashioned cheap businesses and stuff like that i think it looks pretty good got some parking over here and everything like that i wonder if there's actually decorative parking pieces that i could use like i could add in handicap parking or something like that that actually would be a pretty cool idea i don't know if, there, if there's a plug-in in the plug-in store for that let me know because the the way the plugins work in this game is very very similar to how if, if you've ever played um any paradox game recently you probably have used the paradox mods platform it's kind of like that and I gotta admit, I kind of like it being in the game out here, too. A lot of people are kind of like, you know, when it comes to cities, too, they're kind of dick-riding Steam a little bit out here. I'm gonna be realistic with you. I like embedding it in the game a lot more, especially when it automatically downloads what you got anyway. Like, would you add on a previous installation of Windows, you could just take right to a new PC, which is actually a pretty useful thing to actually do. So I'm pretty happy with that. And I don't know why, I just like it better when it functions like that. But anyways, right now we're getting the um, area around the fire station drawn up. I don't know where I'm going to begin the next episode, but it's probably going to be more of the industrial park out here. And we're going to extend it out to where I want, kind of like the main highway. I mean, this city, the footprint of this city is probably going to be so small, we don't even have space for an auxiliary route. Although there probably will be one going to the airport. Because I do know the airport is going to need to inhabit some larger stretch of land. It cannot be in this area, but I do like the way that this is turning out nevertheless. But anyways, as we get some of the um, last road decorations and everything like that set up out here, we get this recycling center down. We're good. We're starting to come up to just about the end of this video. If you did go on to enjoy, you know what to do. You got a reminder three minutes in. You're going to have another reminder come up to the end screen. I will see you guys next time. Take care. Bye for now. Have a great day or night. No matter where in the world you